What's up everybody? Today we're gonna to use a scroll saw to make a sign that was inspired by one of my favorite bands. Stay tuned. <sighs> Can't help myself. So we're on number three, a little more modern. Reason being is because, as you know, number one from like 1920, uh, 1940s, 1950s, whatever it is, 60s, Got it running, got it rolling, it's cool. Had a little hiccup with it uh, stalling because the nut wasn't catching into the shaft. So I hooked that back up, and then I must have been running it too hard because the crankshaft got seized in the ding-dong. So I'm hoping that a little, uh, a little cool down and a little lubrication will help it out. We're gonna see what's going on. And I'm gonna fill the chamber later to hopefully mitigate that from happening again. So, as luck would have it, Homeboy posted this about two hours ago. I said, what's up? He said, 30 bucks. I said, okay. How about 20? And he said, 25 meets you in the middle. I'll be there at 15 minutes. And I was like, dude, I don't know what's going on, but now I got triple D, delta, delta, delta. The only thing that really sucks is that this model right here has a little blower that's supposed to come down in a tube and puff a little air off of the motor that's exhausted or whatever. I'm not really sure what the deal about it is, but um, it kind of blows that that's not there. But again, I think I can make do. <laughs> this thing didn't really need much work. All I did was I did some superficial dust and rust removal, which that was few. Other thing too is that homeboy, I powered it up just to make sure that it was rolling because I was just taking the guy's word for it. Got two speeds high and low. I think it's 850 and 1750 for strokes per minute or whatever. On off switch, which could lock, which is nice. But Homeboy had the Allen key, you had to key it in from this way, and then he had these pieces right here that were coming in from this side. I turned it on and immediately the blade was like, I'm jacked. Let's, let's look at the manual, because that's what I always do. I always try to find the manual to say, how do you align this thing? How do you get the blades or whatever tension properly? Get the drill, whatever you gotta do to make it factory type conditions. I do that and then I lubricate, and then I do any other kind of repairs that I can do uh, that other people have neglected or just didn't really know. If you can see, let me bust out this, the special. So I changed it out with the square bolt, or I'm sorry, the square fastener so that it could, uh, the nut, so that it could stick, which is what the manufacturer had originally intended. The other thing that I did too about that is that I stuck it on, different grits so that I could get it flush because it was all nicked to hell just like with the other one that I had mentioned uh, earlier with the brackets uh, the whole down piece was nicked it was scratched it was gouged whatever filed it I sanded it I got it pretty flush and it was holding good it was pretty it was doing its thing for the longest time until it seized so I got that cleaned up in there I got this thing situated. I made some notes to myself about what the nuts are and then also about tensioning and stuff like that. Ha! The manual also mentioned something about, oh, when you have the good tension, it's, it should sound like a guitar string. Everybody in the world is like, I don't know what that sounds like. Uh, or it says like C major, C minor, I don't know, I don't know music. Uh, if it's anything like the, the band saw, it says you should be able to deflect between like an eighth and a fourth, uh, and a blade, you know what I mean? Of an inch, rather. So I got this thing. It's situated. It feels okay. There's a lot more sophistication with the uh, quick release and everything as compared to the Dunlap and also the Powerhouse or whatever the hell it was called, the 1920s model. So I'm gonna, I got it plugged in. I'm gonna give it a test and we're gonna hope that it works and it doesn't blast me in the face. Oh, good. I wonder why that was so short to... Maybe it's used some force. All right, let's, let's crank it up. All right, see again. Well, last time it just completely, it like flew off. But yeah, I just gotta work on this lower blade tension to make sure that everything is kosher down there and that it would actually stay. Maybe what I could do is stick the locking nut on there 
as just like a fail safe just to make sure i'll just make it doubly doodle because that thing loosened up like pretty far like probably a good 16th if not an eighth of an inch just from that test run right now so <sighs> ideally this is what i would like to finish i mean call me crazy i knew that well with the the right here that i wasn't going to be able to do this fine work because it takes like a giant ass i mean comparative you know it takes a giant ass blade this one is at least thinner and hopefully it's not going to snap because there's like oh if your blade snaps within like five seconds this is like 17 reasons why uh that doesn't really make me feel great but i'm sure there's a lot of uh a lot of alert or a bit of a learning curve to get used to but ideally this thing will not just be drill holes and it'll be actually something cool spread hope like fire see this is just a test man this is a test in like patience and keeping the faith or whatever with your skills <laughs> so after using a combination of the square nut and the locking nut the bottom blade tensioner was fair to continue and just make sure that you know i didn't drink a lot of coffee used relief cuts and uh, use Jimmy Duressa's tip of using the back of the blade to get the finer details. So with the delta and the finer blade, it was easy to get into the intricate parts of the smaller letters and whatnot, but the unfortunate thing is that now I have to get the paper off that I spray adhesive on the on the board. So I got this idea from another YouTuber, JSK Calbo. I probably butchered that name anyways, but uh, I got my little drill that I put onto a printer roller and underneath the the sandpaper there it's just the roller the rubber roller guides and so i got that situated vacuumed it up and it did a lot better than chiseling there you go boom to get this guy to take some shape i just made a housing with some square rods and a backer and then spray painted it black and then i had to go back through and get the p the d and the r inserts so that everything was cool and it actually looked like fire like it's supposed to for the r at least and then i'm planning on hanging it up and we'll see all right so there we go so i have added some leds i just added like one of the little light packs the little battery light packs that you can do with this i just spray painted it with some black spray paint because i knew that i wanted to put some lights in the back so yeah i like it i think it looks pretty cool i kind of like the warm lights better than the cool lights i had a cool light one also but it looked too uh it looked too bright, and I wanted it to look more like fire, so I wanted the warm lights. <laughs> but that's it. Uh, hopefully this like inspires you to, you know, you don't need a laser cutter or anything. It just takes a little bit more work to do it yourself with a scroll saw, but I still like it. I think it looks pretty nice. Thanks for watching. And let me know in the comments what kind of tips and tricks or what other kind of inspirational things you've made.